sort of ironically, I really wrote and directed this film for uh, non-atheists, for believers, in the hopes that I could appeal to people's emotions to begin to look at issues dealing, you know, issues of, of non-belief. So this is really not... Uh, I'm very, very happy you were here, obviously, but um, <laughs> it was really directed at a different kind of an audience, and so some of the arguments will obviously seem very familiar to you, but um, hope you enjoy it anyway, and I'll be here to answer questions afterwards. Thank you. I have had young people come up to me, sort of young, in the sense of sort of 15, 16, 17, who've seen it, and um, they have found these arguments, they've been sort of thinking about atheism and problems with religion, and they have found the arguments very uh, unique. It's very funny for me, who's been doing this for a while, but they're like, oh my God, I'd never thought of that thing about such and such, you know, which I'm sure all of you would find familiar. But it's very uh, gratifying for me when that does happen, and it has quite a bit. Who else? Yes. I enjoyed your film, but I am surprised at your choice to have three of the main characters have been victims of such horrible, horrible things in their past. And the reason I'm surprised is you're talking a lot about their choices about religion, not religion, but they, they're such victims, such horrible victims of horrible things. Can we even think they've actually made choices, or are they still just working out the ramifications of these things that they happen to them, and they're still just victims? Well, I think that um, people reach uh, extreme conclusions as a result of extreme pain and suffering. And so I think, um, you know, in my travels in America, I've, I've come across all of these people in one form or another. And a lot of them, I mean, far more than I think you realize, certainly the Patrick character and the... Um, the Liv Tyler character. In one form or another, I've met dozens of these people, you know, when I was in Tennessee doing my book or in rural Pennsylvania. And one of the things that I found surprising and, and uh, disturbing in a way, because I think it shows what a false view people have of this country and of the problems that it has, is that the critics on the coasts of America have said of the character, Patrick, oh, you know, it's kind of preposterous, no one is like that. But it, the country is full of people like that. And, I mean, that's why you get such peculiar presidents. Um, <laughs> uh, that's why you have... That's, that's, that's why you have such peculiar social policy and homophobia and, I mean, really widespread stuff that should have ended 50, 100 years ago, were it not for religion in the form of people like Patrick, and, and more mildly so. Um, so yeah, I think there's a lot of suffering in this country, and I think, um, I think coming from a European country where there was a much more secure uh, safety net, social safety net, um, I think people are really terrified sometimes here, and things happen to people, and the only recourse they have is the church and God, and that someone's going to take, someone is going to take care of them. Um, which is ironic in a country where democracy should really be the expression of people's um, love for each other and ability to take care of each other. And it somehow it seems to have, at the moment, been diverted into a very selfish way of life that leaves a lot of people stranded. Um, so that, that's a long answer. But <laughs> Greta, my friend. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my question is, uh, the moment at the end when Hollis decides not to say grace with his family, um, I've been in a lot of discussions with people who've seen the movie about what that meant, and um, the, the debate we have is, is Hollis himself having a questioning of his own faith, or is this something he's doing to honor Gavin and his atheism, or are we supposed to, as the audience, is that supposed to be left up to us to decide? So as the writer director, mm -hmm. what do you have to do? I, f I feel that it's left up to uh, the audience, but my feeling is is that a um, that he's been a sort of an automatic Catholic all his life and not really thought about it much in the last few years. He's faced with this moral dilemma. He hears the story of Gavin's travails, 
and he reaches the conclusion that he can be a better person without religion. And that this is just the, the opening of the door. It's the first beginnings of atheism in a, in a character. Um, I, I, interesting enough, I've also had people say, oh, well, that's a, a preposterous story that he has. Well, it's actually the story of my, um, of my family. Uh, my, my, one of my brothers was the result of an affair that my um, father didn't know about until after the baby was born. And when he learned about it, he said immediately, um, well, as far as I'm concerned, he's my baby and I'll bring him up. And he was brought up as one of us kids. Um, my father was an atheist and it was just to him the decent thing to do and he forgave my mother. It was a kind of, I think there was a sort of strange kind of cruelty in that forgiveness, but that's a very complicated thing. But from his point of view, it was the right thing to do to take this boy and make him his own and what his parent had, if not putting the child to bed at night. And he certainly felt that the boy was his. So that was a true story. Yes? Oh, my, uh, first of all, I didn't see the end coming at oh. all. <laughs> and I, I really liked that I didn't see the end coming. Um, the second thing was, oh, a character like Patrick, I could see after all that going on, even being in jail, where he could see himself as being in the right. And no one could convince him otherwise. Uh, absolutely. I think, he's, I think he is the character who changes least. Um, and I think he would, I mean, the, the more difficult things get, for him, the more certain he becomes of his relationship to God, which I sort of see as a Stockholm syndrome <laughs> thing. <laughs> I've always felt that, you know, and, and that, you know, you just keep getting punished and beaten and things get worse and worse and you become more grateful for at least being alive. <laughs> um, as for the unexpected ending, there was a sort of a, there was tremendous pressure on me. I mean, it was a sort of quasi-Hollywood film um, produced out of Hollywood. Uh, but not on a, a very big Hollywood budget. Um, but I had a lot of pressure to make a happy ending, and um, and did he have to jump and all this stuff? And of course he has to jump because that's what proves his value as a human being and his compassion that has something other, than, you know, something not to do with God in it. You know, just that we honor other people for various reasons. But um, in the end, I got so angry. I said, "Okay, I'm going to shoot this whole film. We're not going to see anything except the window, the guy standing there." And at the end, he's going to jump. We realize it's on the second floor and there's a bush underneath. <laughs> and, um, and, he's <laughs> and at that point, they saw how silly the idea was. And I, and I, I, I got away with it. So, um, I'm very glad I did. Happy, uh, unhappy endings are not popular. Yes? Um, so I was curious about the line in here twice um, from the husband who says, Sanctify, purify, and justify and restore to God. Yeah, it's called the Bible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's very poetic and sick at the same time. Yeah, I love it. Actually, Patrick found that. Patrick was, uh, who I think is a fantastic actor. I think he had a very difficult role to play, and he gives it tremendous color. And, yeah, I, I'm very fond of him.